I think as human beings, we want to get more, at least for myself, mm -hmm. more pleasant experiences or the ex kind of experiences I want and less unpleasant experiences. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, as far down as I can see, that seems to be just very, very core. Do you think that's true? And how does that, I'm just trying to look at really, we keep talking about needs. I'm wondering if there's sort of like these core, deeper, really getting down into what's our real needs. Well, I like the, the way you summarized it, and I think if I understood what you're saying, it's not too different than what I hear the Dalai Lama saying or many other people saying, that our basic need is to enjoy life. And, what, and how can we enjoy life if our needs aren't getting met? So to enjoy life is to get our needs met in a way that doesn't create problems for us later. See? Giraffes are cheap. They don't like to pay for getting their needs met. That's right. I'm con apart from my situation yes. for the moment. Even We're coming I'm back to it. Anyway. I know we are, but I'm still connecting up to what they're saying. I mean, take a, an oppressed group of people who are people who are hungry every day for years and years yes. and years and die and die and yes. die, and yes. they never get their need met. Yes. They never get it yes. met. Why? Yes. So they, they know they're hungry. That's their first basic need. They're real need. hungry. They're real hungry. And, and if I they, don't blame them for being angry about it. <laughs> I hope I don't blame them, because then I would be perpetuating the cycle. I hope I don't hear, no one in here hears they're being blamed if they get angry. I'm saying if they get angry, they're less likely to get fed more likely to get killed. And then when I say that to them, which incidentally I work in a lot of places where I'm working, with, just about two weeks ago I was working with people from eight African countries. And, mm -hmm. and uh, the hunger was only one of the things that they saw. They were, mm -hmm. the biggest issue they wanted to deal with me, what do you do when they're putting your people in concentration camps? Yes. That was the, yes. what do you do when these uh, people, uh, and they had a whole bunch of judgments of these people that we're putting the people into. And I said, first thing you need to do is transform all enemy images into needs. You're going to have no power with people until you can translate your enemy images. So, do you think these people are oppressive pigs? Yes! Okay, then we got to work on that. <laughs> then we got to work on that. You see, because as long as you see that, you are more likely to generate counterviolence and cooperation. Mm -hmm. See, so the first step. This was on. This was a workshop on social change. You see. These were these people were not interested in individuals. But they were interested in gangs of individuals. See. Gang. Some gangs call themselves gangs. Mm -hmm. Some gangs call themselves multinational corporations. Mm -hmm. uh, some gangs call themselves governments. Uh, but, so they were interested in how do you deal with gangs? gangs that you see creating great violence. Okay, the first thing is get rid of any enemy image of the gang <coughs> members. Because as long as you think there's something wrong with the gang members, uh, you'll create more violence, I predict, than cooperation. See. So we're supposed to like it that they're putting our people in concentration camps and not feeding them? And, now I'm not asking you to like it. I'm asking you to do more than that. I'm asking you to be able to see that that's the most wonderful thing in the world that these people could be doing. What? <laughs> then I explain. <laughs> you see. And it has to be sincere. Explain. <laughs> that when I work in uh, with my colleagues that I work at in uh, Sierra Leone, uh, we're looking at why would this person take a six-year-old child and hack off the arm? See, uh, if you think that's evil or bad, I'm suggesting you will create more violence. That's good business. Good business. <laughs> so the first thing is to realize, to be conscious that the person who does that does it for the same reason that you and I do everything we do. Is that clear? Each moment, every human being is doing the best they can at that moment to meet their needs. So this, 
whatever the, this uh, and, and whatever need they have, I know also that you and I have that same need because needs are universal. See, so until we can start by trying to empathize with what need is this person meeting by doing this, see, until we can connect with that, as long as we think there's something wrong with this person, that they're bad, we're going to approach it in a way that I think we have less power and more chance to cr create counter-violence. Now, notice what I just said does not mean I have to like that behavior. It means I have to see the humanness of the person who's doing it. Now, I do not ask these people in Sierra Leone to do this first. Not until we've empathized with their feelings about it. You see, I wouldn't want to even think of getting them to empathize with why somebody has cut off the arms of one of their children until they've healed from the pain that that's created for them. So I'm not suggesting that we start with that. But then I'm saying if we really want to change this in a way that doesn't create more violence, we need to get rid of enemy images and connect with what this person's needs are that are being met by cutting off children's arms. Yes? I find it um, more useful to think of it in terms of the need that the person is trying to get met because um, in my thinking, the need isn't actually getting met by yes, I, off the I would arm. agree with you that may or may not. What is there? In, what need are they intending to get met by doing this? Yes. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm unfor unfortunately to say uh, one of the needs that was being met by chopping off the arms of the children did work. It was getting met. A need to get attention and more political power. Uh, call attention to their suffering. So the man that's now be, be given a vice president role in Sierra Leone, it was his troops cutting off the arms and uh, get this to stop. They basically rewarded him with a position in the government. So in this sense, it worked. Yes. Now they're going to pay for it. See, they, they got one need met, but there's other needs that I think they're going to pay for dearly for that. But in this, but other times that we intend it, it doesn't even meet the need we intended it to meet. Yes. Okay, so uh, this gets exactly to what I was getting at about needs, that for this person who wanted, had said had a need for more political power, right, or whatever you just said. Yes. That, is that really a need? We have a need for more power. All of us have a need. Right. So more security, more safety. But there's something more, more than that, we have a need to manipulate our environment. See, the problem is, in our culture, the use of power, the way we've been, we try to meet our need for power and to manipulate, sounds ma exploitive and violent because we're used to a particular form of power usage and manipulation. In fact, we can't survive without power and ability to manipulate. That by itself is, is just a human need. But how do we meet that need if we meet it through punishment, reward, that's a whole other issue. But the need itself for power, we all have it. So, or is it the need for power, or is it just a need to be okay? No, it's a need for power. It's we need, need to control, have be able to control. Again, control in our culture gets seen as a dirty thing because we're associating it with a certain a domination. Mm -hmm. But we all, our need is to, we have to need have, have some control, some power with our environment. Or this is a pretty scary world if we don't have some power. Yeah, but do we have any power control, or is it just, just an illusion anyway? I think we have enormous power if we speak giraffe, if we, if we are interested in power with people. Uh, you see? Uh, enormous power with people. Yes? In the face of a killing machine, like Hitler's yes. armies, how does one, in listening with giraffe ears, avoid meeting a real immediate death? So you're, face, you're up against some people who are using uh, violence to kill people and you are confronting them. How do you avoid being killed? Is that, is that yeah, your question? What does one person do in, in the face of a, of a killing army? Well, If you don't have a facilitator like Marshall Rosenberg there to make two sides meet, 
How does one person meet? Well, you could do you could do what the king of uh, you could do what the king of Denmark did when the Nazis said the next day all Jews will come out in the streets with their yellow armbands on. We are going to round them up and ship them off to a concentration camp. So what can one person do? The king of Denmark said, all citizens, please tomorrow wear yellow bands so the Nazis can't tell who is who. That's what one person could do. And the next day, the poor, you feel sad for the poor Nazis? They can't tell all their guns and all of their power. They couldn't do anything. Thousands of lives were saved. 